Hey, check out my new friend that I have here in the studio. The VTRC by Tegler Audio. So, let's go and check it out. Hey, what's going on, my friend? Chris Alim here from Exan Online. Very excited to talk to you about the VTRC channel strip by Tegler Audio. Now, this is a full channel strip that includes a preamp, a three-band passive Poltec type EQ, and also two compressors, if not three compressors. I'm gonna explain that to you later in the video, so stay tuned. Now, I've been working with this channel strip for uh, the past month and a half. I used it on a recording session where I recorded some back vocals, and I also used it on my latest YouTube videos. Um, not on this one, because I'm actually using it for this video, but on my past YouTube videos, I connected my microphone straight into the VTRC's preamp, used a bit of EQ, compression, and that sounded pretty good and less work to do in post. So in this video, I'm gonna use a raw recording session, a song that I'm working on that is gonna be released in the fall. And most of the recording was done using the preamps of my sound interface, the AXR4. So the recordings I'm gonna use in today's video are gonna be clean recordings, which is perfect to mix uh, with the VTRC. So let's check this out. We're gonna go through all the uh, parameters we have with the VTRC and at the same time, we will listen to some samples as we go. So first, let's look at the bottom left where we have the input connector, which is a combo jack and microphone input where you can connect a microphone or an instrument like an electric guitar or an electric bass. So we have that at the front and also at the back where we have a microphone input and also a line level input. We have the link connector, uh, which is gonna connect two VTRCs together for stereo use and also the output connector. If we get back at the front of the VTRC, let's look at the preamp level. And we're first gonna listen to this audio recording, which is a vocal recording. All right, so this is gonna be the one. Okay, let me check what I have here. If I increase the input. So now I'm getting a very nice, clean signal from my vocal. So I have the input level on the top left and at the bottom right, we have the output level. And this is where I'm gonna manage my, uh, my level, my vocal level. Give it all to find you. I need to find a place to run to. Very nice. Now there's nothing on this vocal, no reverb, no delay, no EQ, no compression. It's very raw, okay? Um, if we look here, we have a very nice VU meter. Uh, right now, it is set up to preamp, which is gonna give us the input level uh, coming into the VTRC. We can set the VU meter to EQ, which is gonna give us the, uh, the level after EQ. The amount of gain reduction, if we bring this one to compress and also the output level going out of the VTRC. So I'm gonna bring that back to preamp. And now I'm gonna increase that gain knob that we have that is part of the preamp level. This is very cool because at the same time, it's gonna change the tonal balance of the sound just by increasing that gain knob, which is gonna add a bit more saturation, uh, basically more harmonics. So let's try this out. Give it all to find you. If I bring it to the I max. I find a place to run to. And even if I take a lifetime. Now I'm gonna get a bit more of a clean signal without the gain. Yes, I know you're worth it. Though I know I don't deserve it. That's pretty cool. I'm looking for a way to. Sounds a bit more fat a bit more warm at the same time, so I kind of like that. So very nice, uh, sweet saturation uh, going on here by increasing the gain level, you know, in combination with the input. So it's, it makes like that preamp very versatile as far as the tone goes. So I kind of like that. So I'm just gonna rebalance that a bit. And uh, you know what, let's, again, I'm just gonna bring that back to Mad the Max and we'll listen to a before and after. Give it all to 
find you I need to find a place to run to And even if I take a lifetime Nothing left to lose So without the VTRC? Yes, I know you're worth it Though I know I don't deserve it Very nice. I'm looking for a Yeah, I really love that creamy color we get with uh, uh, this combination of gain and input level on that vocal. So what we're going to do now, I'm just going to rebalance that a bit. And uh, let's look at the bottom uh, with all those switches we have. Uh, the first one is uh, the switch to go for a microphone input. Uh, or a line input. Then we have the 48 volt for phantom power. Uh, then we have the uh, low cut uh, switch, which can be bypassed or um, can go from 80 hertz to 160 hertz. I'm going to keep it at 80 hertz for the vocal. Uh, then there's also a polarity switch, which is useful when recording. And I'm going to activate the EQ by bringing that switch up. And now we have access to our passive Pultic type EQ, uh, which is very nice. So it's a three band EQ. So we have three filters. Uh, the first one is a boost filter, uh, where you can boost the frequencies from 80 hertz to 120, 200, 300, 500, 700, and up to one kilohertz. Now the second filter is a cut filter where we can attenuate frequencies uh, from 200 hertz to 300, 500, 700, 1k, 1.5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7k. So this is the cut uh, filter. Now the third filter is again another boost filter where we can boost uh, higher frequencies down from 1.5 kilohertz and that goes up to you know, even 16, 20 to 24 kilohertz. Now this is pretty high and you might tell me that, you know, uh, 24 kilohertz is even higher than the limit that humans can hear. And you're right. However, those filters are like the bands are pretty wide. Okay. So they cover a lot of frequencies. Okay. So by um, boosting 24 kilohertz, that is also going to boost the surrounding frequencies due to the wide bandwidth of these filters, which has a very nice, smooth and sweet top end. And we'll uh, test this out on an acoustic guitar later. So let's start by EQing the vocal briefly. Give it all to find you. I need to find a place to run to. Okay, so I'm going to add a bit of 120. Just to add a bit more weight nothing left to, lose. to the vocal. Let's cut at 200. Yes, I know you're worth it. Though I know I don't do. Survey. All right. Looking for a way to so let's go in the boost you. at 12. You can have it all. Oh, very nice. Give it all to find you. I need to find a place to run to. Okay, let's bypass it. And even if I take a lifetime, nothing left to lose. Give it all to find you. I need to find a place to run to and even if i take a lifetime sounds very good you know very nice eq you know it does eq the vocal pretty well in a very transparent way um, and not in an edgy way so it sounds still sounds very smooth so it's a very smooth eq so now let's look at the compressors we have here we have a very tube compressor that we can activate, and also an opto compressor. And the opto compressor is going to be similar to an LA-2A compressor. The very tube is a tube compressor, and this one's going to be a bit more uh, similar to a uh, manly very mu compressor just to give you an idea. As far as the attack and release goes, we have fast, which is for a fast attack and a fast release. We have a slow, for a slow attack, slow release. And then we have auto, which will automatically set up the attack and release time according to the signal going into the compressor. And the cool thing is that we can activate both compressors at the same time. And that's why I was saying that we have, sort of say, three compressors on this uh, unit, uh, which is quite cool. So by adding those two compressors at the same time is going to give us a completely different type of compression. 
And again, we will demonstrate that later on. Now, these compressors will use a soft knee. And the cool thing you can also do with the compressor is to use the EQ as a side chain to the compressor. And the way to do it is very simple. Uh, you bypass the EQ, and you can do so by making sure that this switch here is set up to EQ comp, which is gonna bring the EQ pre-compression. You can change that around and also bring the, uh, the EQ post compression if you want to. Uh, but to use the EQ as a side chain, again, you bypass the EQ and you bring the EQ pre-compressor. And with that combination, it will make the EQ um, as a side chain to the compressor. So you can basically, for example, DS a vocal if you want to. So now let's uh, try the very tube compressor on the lead vocal. Give it all to find you. I need to find a place now I'm getting the, um, the, the amount of gain reduction with the VU meter. Even if I take a lifetime, nothing left to Now it's on fast as far as the attack and release goes. Yes, I know you're worth it. Though I know I don't if I increase the compression it. knob, it's going to add more compression. I'm looking for a way to have you. Because you can have it all. Okay, Give let's go with uh, the opto. Find you. I need to find a place to run to. Yeah, I kind of like that. And even if I take a lifetime, nothing left to lose. Okay, let's... All right, let's bring on some music. Give it all to find you. I need to find a place to run to. Let's go with auto. And even if I take a lifetime, nothing left to lose. Very nice. Yes, I know you're worth it Though I know I don't deserve it I'm looking for a way to have you Cause you can have it all Very nice. Now, I'm adding a lot of compression. I just want you uh, to, uh, to listen to the effect of compression using the VTRC. And this is how it sounds like. Sounds very smooth. Very nice, and I kind of like that auto um, attack and release going on on the vocal. And the auto compressor sounds very good also on the vocal. Okay, now I'm gonna try an acoustic guitar this time. Okay, let's add some 24 kilohertz. Okay, listen to that sweetness on the top end. Very nice. If I bypass the EQ only. Very cool, okay. Let's add some compression. Let's go with the tube, the very tube compression. Let's go with opto. Yeah, I think that's good, it's not a lot of compression but it sounds very good on the acoustic guitar. And I tend not to compress acoustic guitars much, uh, but the Opto works pretty well. Now, as far as I can tell, the, uh, even with a fast attack and fast release, the Opto seems slower than the Very Mu, and in its nature, a tube compressor is going to react faster uh, than an Opto compressor. But that 24 kilohertz boost you know, adds a very nice, sweet shine uh, to the acoustic guitars. Okay, now I'm gonna try this one on an electric bass. Okay, I'm gonna add the VTRC. Okay, on this one, let's add some gain. Check this out. That's so cool. Okay, so just a bit of saturation. I think that's gonna be good. All right, so let's add some EQ. 
bit of boost at 80. Let me bring a cut at 200, just a tiny cut. And let's boost 2K, which is gonna like emphasize more on the, uh, on the high frequencies of the bass to add a bit more edginess, you know? I like that. Okay, let's bypass the EQ only. That's cool. You now a 2K boost on bass, or like between 1K and 2K is gonna add some very nice definition. And it's gonna make the bass cut through the mix a bit more, especially on small speakers. So, very cool. Now let's add some compression on the bass. Let's go on this one with the very tube to begin with. Fast attack, fast release. If I go with Opto. Let's bring this one down to automatic. That's interesting. Now I went heavy on the saturation, but I kind of like it. So this is how you can go and mix a bass using the VTRC. Okay, now the last example I have for you is to use the VTRC in parallel to the kick and snare on this drum recording. So I'm gonna bring that VTRC to my parallel channel and I'm just gonna listen to the VTRC on the kick and snare on its own. Let's bring that back. It's a bit of saturation. Okay, let's boost some 80 hertz. A bit of a cut, maybe at 500 or so. And let's boost some top end. All right, okay, let's add some compression. Let's go with uh, both compressors, okay? Let's try the Varitube and the Opto. Let's destroy and compress that, uh, that snare and kick heavily. Now it's way over compressed, but it's on purpose. And now I'm gonna blend this with the rest of the drum kit. Uh, but focus on the kick and snare. This is what I'm sending to uh, the parallel channel, okay? You know, that combination of the two, uh, like the very tube and the opto compressor seems to work pretty well in parallel to the kick and snare. So I kind of like that. Um, and you know, the thing with parallel processing on drums, it's, it's always cool to add a bit more EQ. You boost the top end, you boost the, uh, the, the bottom end also, and 
it just adds a lot to that parallel processing. And on top of that, we have like light saturation using the uh, like the very flexible, you know, preamp uh, thing going on here um, to add a bit more color fatness. Uh, to the clean recording that I have on this recording session. That again is fully raw at the moment. Uh, so this is what we get with the Tegler Audio VTRC channel strip, uh, which works well when recording because of its nice flexible preamp and also that three band uh, Poltec type EQ. And of course the compressors, which can be very useful when recording. Now, when I record vocals, I'll be honest with you, it's not like adding EQ on the vocal while recording is not something I do a lot. Uh, to the exception of my own voice when recording my videos, I do tend to add a bit of EQ right away uh, when I record since I'm always at the same place, using the same mic, in the same environment and same settings, you know. So, uh, it is easy for me to tweak that around right away and uh, have way less to do in post. But when I record vocals for, uh, like with a client for a song, I do not EQ the vocal, but I do like to compress if I can, you know? So adding compression has a lot of benefits and that can be for another video. Uh, but by using the VTRT channel strip, that helps me uh, to, to do this kind of stuff when recording. And also very useful when mixing. And I also did uh, work with the VTRC in the mixing session uh, to mix a vocal, uh, which was part of the full chain. So that was added on my, uh, on my vocal channel, uh, just to use a bit of, um, a bit of EQ, of course, an opto compressor on this one and that sounded very, very good. So I really enjoy working with the VTRC in a recording situation and also in the mixing situation. So I'm getting a lot out of this unit and you know, I don't have a lot of cons to be honest with you when it comes to the VTRC channel strip. Now, if you look at the price, if you wanna put your hands on one of these, uh, we're looking at um, around $2,200 US. I think it's a bit less. So I'm gonna leave the link down below if you wanna check it out. And also let me know in the comments section if uh, you work with an external preamp, like this one or any other kind of preamps. If you do, let me know which preamp you like to work with when recording in your home studio. And if not, let me know if you're using your interface's preamps, you know, um, anything goes <laughs> when it comes to production, but let me know what you use on your side. And if you're not using an external preamp like this one, let me know if you're planning on doing so in the future, or you just don't care, you know, which is okay too. So <laughs> and again, anything goes. And also leave your questions, comments, and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Until next time, take care and see you.